Upon hearing her husband's agonizing groans, Sally's heart sank. Even though Harry was going through immense pain, she still loved him dearly. Harry was resolute in his refusal to reveal his vulnerability, wanting to stay strong. This was especially true for Sally, who already had so much responsibility weighing on her. For a period of two years, Harry had been restricted to a bed and unable to stand up by himself. Even in the face of daunting odds, Sally never faltered in her resolve to stand by Harry and offer him full support. She stood firm on her decision not to send him away to a hospice, instead doing all she could to take care of him through every step. Friends and family around the couple lent their support in whatever ways they could, offering words of encouragement and a kind embrace in difficult times. The compassion of the people they were surrounded by brought them solace. Rhonda, the ever-dependable pal, was always ready to lend her unsolicited opinions and advice. On this specific occasion though, she had an unexpected and startling way of doing it. Sally, it's not my place to meddle, but I'm concerned for you. You have your whole life ahead of you and deserve to be happy. Consider carefully the decision you are about to make. Rhonda said to her one day, What are you talking about, Rhonda? I expected you to say something nicer than that. Sally was disappointed in her close friend. Sally was still young and had a lot of potential for a fulfilling future, but her prospects were now darkened by Harry's devastating. The burden of the situation was overwhelming, causing her to weep as she was filled with emotions, the sadness in her eyes reflected the intense love she had for her husband and the pain she felt at witnessing his suffering. As Sally cooked breakfast, she couldn't help but think back to the beginning of their love story. Ten years prior as a young student on the brink of graduation, she had fallen deeply in love with her philosophy. He was 23 years, her senior, but with his smooth, velvety voice and eloquent words, he had captivated her completely. Sally was just one of many young women, charmed by the professor's charisma, but for her, he held a special place in her heart. The love she felt for him was all-consuming. And in that moment, nothing else in the world seemed to. Sally came from a wealthy but small family consisting only of her and her mother, Mrs. Gardner. Sadly, her grandparents had passed away years ago. The infertility of Sally's grandmother, Mrs. Foyle, was the root cause of the small family. Mrs. Foyle was only able to conceive at the age of 45, unlike Sally's mother who had given birth to Sally at the age of. Sally's father was somewhere out in the world having chosen to run away. When he learned of Mrs. Gardner's pregnancy, he was not interested in starting a family and only wanted to have a relationship with Mrs. Gardner with no strings attached. He was ten years older than her, but when faced with the prospect of fatherhood, he chose to flee instead of stepping up and accepting his responsi. Mrs. Gardner chose not to pursue him, realizing that it would be better for Sally to grow up without a father who was not willing to be a responsible and loving parent. She made the difficult but selfless decision to raise Sally on her own, putting her daughter's well-being above her own desire for complete family. Despite the challenges of raising a child on her own, Mrs. Gardner was determined to be an independent woman and provide for. However, she soon found out that raising a child was not as easy as it seemed, and she was grateful for the support of her wealthy parents. They were always ready to help assuring Mrs. Garner that they could handle many things and assist in raising their granddaughter. Sally Sally's grandfather, Mr. Foyle was a self-made man who had built his own wealth from the ground. Up at the young age of 16, he left his hometown and journey to the city. In pursuit of his dreams, he took on odd jobs, the crucial one being cleaning windows on tall buildings. That's how he would meet wealthy individuals and learn from. With his determination and entrepreneurial spirit, Mr. Foyle was able to build a successful construction business and become a millionaire by the age of 25. Thanks to a success, the family was financially secure and did not have to worry about financial struggles hurt by the betrayal of the man she loved. Mrs. Garner found it difficult to trust and love again. She saw only negativity and selfishness in men, and felt no need for their attention. Instead, 
she poured all of her energy and love into raising her daughter Sally. Mrs. Garner was immensely proud of her daughter, who brought joy to her life. With her many talents and loving nature, Sally was truly one of a kind and brought happiness and fulfillment to her mother's. Sally excelled in school and was particularly gifted in the arts after high school, she went on to study interior design in university where she eventually landed a prestigious job at a design company in Europe. Her co-workers and colleagues recognized her talent and saw a bright future ahead of her if she continued to develop her skills and work hard at the company. But for some reason, Sally decided to pursue her masters. When Sally turned 20, the sudden loss of her grandparents with difference in just a week was a big shock for her and Mrs. Gardner. They had lost not only their parents, but also the source of love, comfort, and support in their lives. Mrs. Gardner especially took the loss of her parents hard as she had been very close to them. They used to share everything with each other and would often talk for hours on. In their absence, the big house that was once filled with laughter and love became quiet and somber. The memories of them were everywhere and it felt like they were still there, but their physical presence was greatly missed, adding insult to injury. The relationship between mother and daughter also deteriorated in that period of there. It all started when Sally went back to school to pursue her masters. She fell in love with her professor who was in his late fifties. Mrs. Garner didn't like where it was going at all. When Sally brought her boyfriend to meet her mother, Mrs. Garner was taken aback by his age. He was nearly the same age as her. Despite him being a well-respected professor, Mrs. Garner was able to see right through him and was not impressed by the relat. The relationship between mother and daughter was only getting worse. Mrs. Gardner was not the one in love with Magnus, which meant she could objectively assess the whole picture. She was able to draw from her own past experience with a similar gentleman to warn Sally about the pitfalls of rushing into a relationship despite their mother's warnings, Sally seemed determined to ignore any warning signs in Rent Flag. Mrs. Gardner felt helpless as she tried to explain to her daughter that her feelings were likely just temporary and that it takes time to truly get to know someone. But Sally was resolute in her feelings and refused to listen to her mother's advice. Determined to protect her daughter. Mrs. Gardner decided to take matters into her own hands and launched her own investigation into the professor's background. With the help of her influential friends in Europe, she was able to uncover some disturbing details about the man who was supposedly going to be her son-in-law. It was revealed that the professor had a history of seducing young student. He would carefully select his victims who were usually attractive and talented young women who were struggling with their studies. Mrs. Garner's investigation also uncovered evidence of the professor's financial instability, as she discovered several loans under his name that were consistently overdue. At first, she tried to talk to her daughter and express her concerns, but Sally was stubborn and refused to. Mrs. Gardner was eventually forced to take a more direct approach and demand that Sally and her relationship with the professor. She believed that the older man was only using her daughter for monetary gain given her family's wealth. This led to numerous confrontations between the two generations, each one becoming increasingly heated. How can you not understand this, Mrs. Garner would say he's going to use you, and then when he's taken what he wants, he'll get rid of you. I've seen people like him before. They both knew that Sally was born as a result of a relationship that wasn't going anywhere. However, Mrs. Garner believed that in their case, they were young and naive. This was different as a professor was a man who deliberately targeted young and wealthy women, using them for his own gain and then discarding them once he was. Sally wanted Magnus meet her mother again. Despite Mrs. Gardner's warnings, Magnus put on a show of being a romantic man who had finally found the soulmate. However, as soon as he realized how wealthy they actually were, he saw an even bigger opportunity. At the time, Magnus was staying in a university-provided apartment because the bank had taken his. He was now picturing how he'd paid off all his debts. His main goal was to create a rift between Sally and her mother and to split their fortune. Sadly, part of his plan worked, 
and the relationship between Sally and her mother became increasingly strained. After a few days of staying with Sally and Mrs. Garner, Magnus left the house early in the morning, leaving behind a note on Sally's bedside. The note read that it was either him or her mother. The situation was devastating for Sally, who was torn between her love for Magnus and her loyalty to her mother. The raindrops fell heavily on the ground, matching the somber mood of the situation. Sally was leaving and Mrs. Garner could do nothing to stop her. Despite her efforts to protect her daughter, Sally had made up her mind to be with Magnus before coming to meet Mrs. Gardner. Magnus had been messing with Sally's head trying to convince her to take her life into her own hands and not be dependent on her mother. He told her that she deserved half of the fortune. However, when Sally showed up at Magnus' door with just her suitcase, he knew his plan was over. Are you nuts? What did you say to your mother? I thought you would come with at least half of the fortune. I think this whole thing was a big mistake, and I feel like I don't love you anymore, Sally. I'm. But we can't be together. What are you talking about? Sally was shocked and hurt. She realized that Magnus never truly loved her, but only saw her as a means to an end. This story is a testament to the power of infatuation and how it can actually cloud a person's judgment. She gathered her strength and replied, I thought love was about supporting each other and facing life's challenges together, not about money. I'm so sorry. And just like that, Magnus shut the door in front of her. A moment later, a stream of tears began flowing from her eyes. She stood there for several minutes, not knowing what to do next. Then she picked up her suitcase and slowly wandered away. She thought hard about everything she had done wrong, how she didn't listen to her, dear mom, how she ended up being. Now that she was all alone, she had to figure out her ways. For now, she thought she needed to find a job. Soon as she realized all the stress and anxiety made her feel so insecure that she couldn't find a decent job for her qualifications. There was one job at a school. They had been looking for an arts teacher. The school was located in an inner city, had limited funding, and mainly served students from underprivileged backgrounds. The pay was low and not many people were willing to take on the. A young teacher faced a challenging time as the students continually teased and even attempted to harass her. Despite the difficulties, Sally showed resilience and stood her ground expertly handling any insults or difficult situations thrown her way to her. Colleagues surprised she was able to maintain her composure and assert herself as a competent authority figure. Eventually something unexpected happened that led to her meeting. Harry worked as a system administrator at the school and was fortunate enough to not have to deal with troublesome students. He tried to avoid confrontations with the difficult teenagers. He was thin and wore glasses, making him an easy target for bullies. He secretly liked Sally, but was too shy and lacked the confidence to approach her. For now, he remained the spectator until one. Despite his nervousness, Harry mustered up the courage to approach Sally. One day he waited for her to exit the building, but to his surprise, she was accompanied by a group of teenagers who were harassing her. Harry quickly walked behind the corner. He was too shy to call out her feeling that someone as beautiful as Sally would not take notice of someone like him. The teenagers were much bolder and continued to shout insults. Harry hesitant about his next move. Decided just to follow them as they walked around the corner, the leader of the group, Liam said to Sally, let's talk now. Huh? You're too confident in the classroom. Along with two other classmates, Liam pounced on Sally, and they suddenly started pulling her into an alleyway. They were out of control, seemingly under the influence of some kind of. Sally desperately cried out for help as she was being dragged down the alleyway just when she thought all hope was lost. A thin young man appeared from the other end of the alleyway. She recognized him as a geek from the school, and he was armed with a stick. Harry confronted the bullies and demanded that they leave her alone. The bullies greeted Harry's arrival with mocking laughter and quickly turned their attention. 
the situation was about to turn into a double attack, but Sally took action that she never thought she was capable of. She grabbed a brick from the ground and swung it at Liam, hitting him on the shoulder. The blow was hard enough that Liam immediately retreated and raised his hands and surrender. Then she started screaming at them historically like a wounded dog. The other two bullies stopped their attack and fled the scene, but they did manage to jump on Harry on the way and beat him. Harry was left badly injured and spent a week recovering. Sally checked up on him the whole week after the attack. The teenagers were reported and they were expected to be sent to juvenile detention. This event had a significant impact on the school. As the rest of the students began to show more respect towards the young teacher. After all, she dealt with one of the most difficult kits of the school. From that point on, no student dared to misbehave in her. Harry and Sally became close friends over the years, but Harry never dared to reveal the deeper feelings yet for her. He was afraid that confessing his love would lead to rejection in the end of their friendship, and he couldn't bear the thought of never hearing Sally's cheerful laughter again. When Harry finally confesses love to Sally, she was overjoyed. She had been secretly in love with him too, but was also afraid of ruining their. From that moment on, they started a new chapter in their lives and became a happy couple. Harry was an absolute opposite of Sally's previous love. He was willing to sacrifice his life for Sally's happiness. They had a wonderful time together and even planned to start a family. However, tragedy struck. Harry woke up one day with a really bad headache. When he got up, he couldn't stand on his. He was the unhealed hematoma from the injury. The doctors gave him a grim prognosis and informed him that he wouldn't have much time left to live. The only hope they had was a costly procedure at a clinic which they couldn't afford. Sally considered asking her mother for help, but her mother had sold her home and disappeared without a trace wanting to leave her past. Sally had to leave school to take care of Harry, but they needed some kind of income. She looked for something part-time for a while and found one, a wealthy household needed a cleaner. She was happy they hired her even though the residents appeared to be haughty and harsh towards her. But Sally didn't care about the way she was treated as long as she was getting paid weekly while cleaning the house, she noticed a framed portrait on the wall and couldn't believe her. That was her childhood photo. She was overwhelmed by memories but confused as to what her portrait was doing in this house. The owner said that they purchased the house recently and the previous owners must have forgotten to take it. It didn't really sound suspicious to Sally. She figured her mother must have lived in this house and when she moved down, left a portrait. Sally thought she probably left it there on purpose since she was upset. Her heart ed at the moment, she really wished she could visit her mother and give her a hug. But after all that happened, she was afraid her mom would not let her near her, but she was wrong. The owners left the house. They asked Sally to just clean up downstairs and ignored the upstairs. They said their mentally ill sister had been living with them and she'd been going through a difficult time. Sally thought it's even better for her and she won't have to do much work. While she was dusting the TV stand in the hallway, she heard a low moan from upstairs. She stopped and listened. The moaning continued and it was full of pain. As much as Sally wanted to mind her own business, it was difficult to ignore the moaning. She was familiar with this type of moaning as it indicated that the person was in severe. When Harry had headaches, he would moan like that. She couldn't take it anymore and went upstairs. She slowly approached the door and noticed the key in the lock. The whole situation was getting more suspicious. She wondered why the door was locked from the outside. Something wasn't right. Eventually, Sally summoned all of her courage and opened the door silently. To her shock, she found her mother lying on the bed inside. She looked like she had been torture. There were black shadows around her eyes and her lips indicated she was dehydrated. She was lying on the bed with her eyes closed. When Sally came in, she opened her eyes, but she was looking somewhere off to the side. Sally realized she couldn't see. She slowly approached her mother and spoke to her. 
When her mother recognized Sally's voice, they both hugged and cried. The couple was arrested upon their return. Sally was stunned when her mother told the whole, Bridget showed up one day claiming she was her half-sister. As it turned out, Sally's grandfather made a mistake when he was younger by giving into a momentary attraction, which he regretted for the rest of his life as a result, and a legitimate daughter was born. Bridget, Mrs. Gardner's, half-sister, was a troubled woman who had been in and out of prison many times. Bridget had never known that her father was a wealthy man. However, after her mother's death, she discovered unsent letters from her mother, which revealed the truth to her. She and her husband then searched for her half-sister and demanded that she shared the inheritance with them. Surprisingly, Mrs. Garner agreed to do that, but only on the condition that Bridget take a DNA test. Since the criminals thought the DNA test was too risky for their identities, they devised the plan to stealing her. They poisoned and paralyzed Sally's mother as part of their strategy to steal her house. Fortunately, Sally disrupted their plans preventing them from achieving their goal. Neither Sally nor her mother could have imagined that they would reunite under such distressing circumstances, but their meeting had a lasting impact on their lives. Despite only a few months passing happiness has been restored to their family. Harry had a successful recovery following extensive treatment at a costly facility. Mrs. Garner also fully bounced back from the poisoning. Feeling guilty, Sally sought forgiveness and regretfully apologized. She gained invaluable insights from the professor, which connected her with Harry. Their relationship blossomed into a beautiful family, as they were expecting a child together, something that wouldn't have been possible without their chance meeting. Sally was beaming with joy when she spread the news with everyone. Harry and Mrs. Gardner were ecstatic to hear it and celebrated with her. Despite all the excitement, Sally carried on teaching art in school as usual. She was full of energy when it came to teaching. Yet, she was unhappy about having to deal with teenagers who were sentenced to juvenile detention. Despite the trauma they had caused, she viewed them as innocent children. Without their interference, Harry would not have been injured and her mother wouldn't have been able to save him. Thus, despite being a victim of assault, she wanted the court to be kind when considering their judgment. Harry and Sally chose to invest their energy in working with the kids at school having problems and helping them take the right decisions.